Now, just open up a blank uh, blank sheet here, basically. I'm going to quickly pull something together from scratch here. And uh, one quick way of doing that is to use this, this Add Data button up here. Uh, you've got a few options within that. So if you click the arrow to its right, uh, you've got Add Data, you've got Add Base Map, um, and you've got Add Data from ArcGIS GIS Online. Uh, just quickly, the Add Base Map is kind of like setting up a um, uh, like a background picture for your maps. Uh, you can click on this and a number of options show up uh, such as, just give it a second here, um, various kinds of aerial maps of different locations, uh, maps from Bing, uh, maps from other sources, uh, relief maps, street maps, pretty much anything you might want to like, you might want to use. There's an example of that in here. So. Uh, if you're so inclined, you can just uh, lay down, say, um, let's just say a shaded relief map for the moment. Now, uh, as I said, this is just basically background. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, ArcGIS is a powerful analytical tool. Uh, this this background map doesn't really perf perform a role in the analysis part of the uh, software. It's really just something that lies behind uh, the data that you superimpose on top of it. I'm now going to uh, zoom in on an area that I'm a little bit uh, more familiar with, uh, South Central PA, where I live. And I've got a few options for doing that. If you look up here towards the upper left part of the screen, uh, this is the zoom in and this is the zoom out. So if I click this a few times, uh, you'll notice that my view starts to magnify. Another option is I can use the scroll wheel in the middle of my mouse. So I'll click that a couple times and you see it has a similar effect. And one more option is up here this is a zoom in, this is a zoom out. So if I click on the zoom in and I draw a little box here, say in the vicinity of the mid-Atlantic, I will zoom to that area. Uh, now this is all very nice, um, but it doesn't really tell me a whole lot. So I'm going to add some data layers on top of this. And the way that uh, ArcGIS works in general is that it provides you with a view of a succession of layers of data. And that's reflected in the menu here where it says, reasonably enough, layers. A lot of states maintain what are called data clearing houses with geospatial data. In the case of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania has the Pennsylvania Spatial Data Access site, which you can find on the internet. And uh, I've acquired some data from there, which I'm going to load into this map right now. Uh, once again, I'm going to refer to, I'm going to make use of this add data button up here and uh, so click here choose the add data and um, since I've been using the site before it goes directly to this uh, folder where I'm keeping this data so first I'm going to add what's called a shape file so I'm going to add the Pennsylvania 2011-01 shape file and there's Pennsylvania and I think I'll add one more. I think I'll also add the Pennsylvania State Roads shape file. That'll take a few seconds for all those to fill in. There are quite a few of them. And I think once that do once that's done, I will zoom in a bit more. Uh, as you can see from my my cursor here, I'm still in zoom mode, so I'm just going to draw a rectangle around that and zoom in on Pennsylvania. As I mentioned, uh, ArcGIS represents data by having a series of superimposed layers. Um, and so here are the two layers we just added. And uh, the user can at any time either uh, check or uncheck these, which will in this case, unchecking it removes all those roads, rechecking it makes them appear again. Similarly, I can uncheck the county border lines and they will disappear and uh, I can recheck them again and they will reappear. Um, 
Now, there may be some circumstances under which one layer may prevent you from seeing things on another layer. And if that's a problem, well, you can always shuffle the layers around. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind is, you know, look up here. We've got a couple of different possible views in the table of contents. Uh, right now, it's in what's called the list by source view. If you want to change the uh, layering of the different layers, you need to switch to this view, which is the list by drawing order view. If you click on that, then let's say you wanted the PA counties on top of the PA roads in this case, but let's just take this and push it up. And now the PA counties are completely blocking out the PA, ro the PA state roads, uh, which you really don't want, really don't want that to, to be the case. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to drag it back down here where it originally was. And then I'm going to go back to my original view here. Earlier when I was pulling the layers into this model, I made some references to shape files. Uh, layers can occur in different formats, and two of the most common formats are shape files and geodatabases. Uh, ESRI has been trying to encourage its users to migrate towards geodatabases, which offer certain technical advantages that it would probably take me quite a while to explain. Uh, and in fact, the animation that I'm doing later on uh, specifically requires the use of a geodatabase. Um, however, uh, shapefiles have been around for quite a long time now. They're widely available, and uh, they're supported by a variety of uh, GIS software platforms produced by companies other than Esri.